slow start here at Surf Ski Weather Headquarters. Mitt, got another bowl of Steve and T-Rex wondering, are we going to go out the door? What is this music? This is new music we're going to experiment with. Nick Laudini wrote it for us. A little ragtime intro to Out the Door, Weather and More. What do you think? You want to go? Out the door. Tunes now. We got Tunes <laughs> T-Rex to go with your barking. Does it match up? <laughs> 40 degrees at 8.30 on April 6th. When the sun came up this morning, it was actually snowing and raining a little bit here again today. Today is day, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, day four of this Northeaster. Northeast, Nor'easter, <laughs> even though it's not really a Nor'easter anymore, but the system has been sitting in the Gulf of Maine now for a couple of days. And the wind has picked up more from the north. The storm has wobbled west. So if you look at the surface map this morning, you see P-Town in the 30s with wind gusting past 20 from the north. Not exactly a classic, beautiful spring day, depending on your perspective, I guess. And uh, uh, temperatures are in the 30s. Northern New England also in the 30s. And you still have some gusty winds past, what's that, uh, 30, past 30 miles an hour at Matinicus Rock off the coast of Maine. The low pressure center is weakening, but it's wobbling back toward the west a little bit this morning. At 999 millibars, there's the Weather Prediction Center analysis, and you see the orange dashed lines. Those are kinks in the isobars, little surface convergence, upper level energy causing more rain and snow showers. Today is the ninth day in a row where it has snowed somewhere in New England. Lifted some of the images this morning as the sun was coming up. I think my favorite is Saddleback. Weir and Russ are at Saddleback skiing today. It was a widespread 20 to 30 inch snowfall for the mountains from New York to Maine. And you know, the West is getting it too. I don't wanna uh, <laughs> ignore the West too much, but uh, the storm's crossing the country. Coast to coast, week 23 in a row of North America snow. And we're gonna go for 24 too, by the way. Anyhow, so those, those surface troughs generating Classic April sky, you know that expression, April showers. It has to do with cold air aloft, warmer air near the ground, especially after the sun comes up. That's instability, we talk about it a lot. Break time for the birds. This one's for the birds, a break for the birds. Sometimes when they go by, they honk a lot, sometimes not. So those are not Canada geese, right, Martin? Those are Brant geese, is that correct? <laughs> My viewers, our viewers, we're all a big team here, uh, spreading the knowledge. <laughs> I think I called them cormorants a couple years ago. Anyhow, uh, they're flying west, so I don't know. They can't decide whether it's time to fly north or south. <laughs> I think it's time to fly north, <laughs> I would think. Although the air is coming from the north, that would be a headwind, wouldn't it? All right, so yeah, that instability. The temperature on Mount Washington this morning is 12 degrees, so it's actually colder than it's been in two days. So that's cold air aloft. Cold air is heavy. It tends to sink, and warm air is light. It tends to rise, and those rising plumes of air create these April showers, and then after they go by, the air sinks again. The sun comes out, so you get sun, you get a shower, and so on and so on. And I've got word from our skiing friends uh, yesterday. It was still a powder day, but it was getting warm. And as Sean Vecchioni, shown here on the JPEAK website, says it gets manky. It gets manky. So yesterday, the temperature came up enough that the snow got kind of wet. And then last night, there was a little bit of a refreeze. So there is crust on top of the powder, at least below 2,500 feet this morning. New England day. Tommy reports he was hiking up yesterday, too. A lot of people reporting on the best snow they've seen, not only in April, but really in the entire winter. Again, we've said that so many times. How many times this year have we said, oh, this winter is terrible. It's the worst winter ever. And then uh, two weeks later, we're going, wow, this is the best skiing we've ever had. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever is very short in our minds, isn't it? Anyhow, uh, there's some blue sky. There are the darker clouds. And that's how it's going to be today. Those, those orange troughs. Oh, just got... Uh, a photo bomb by a, a morning dove. Hello, morning dove. Oh, where's the cat? <laughs> That's where the cat usually sits. Got to go do a cat update. Anyhow, uh, the the map shows uh, more orange lines coming by this afternoon and tonight. So uh, the surface trough and the, the low pressure system are going to be slow to move out tomorrow. A little bit more sunny than today and so on and so on. And 
And you go to Monday, and look at the three H's there right over the East Coast. Now, that next weather system over the Midwest is pretty close, and there's a chance we're going to get some clouds trying to increase here, especially high clouds uh, in northern New England, northwestern New England. So the eclipse is not a lock on sunshine, but high, thin clouds shouldn't dim it too much. That would be okay. You missed it. That, that bird was just taunting you, taunting you. Uh, you know, I got him tied up. I don't really let him catch birds, you know, occasionally. A mouse, that's no problem. Oh, uh, you need some attention, flagpole. We're gonna give the attention to the flagpole, tighten it up and secure things before heading off skiing again. So what's the forecast for me to go skiing or you to do your gardening or whatever you wanna do this weekend? It is for slow drying, scattered showers. There's the Euro. Uh, it shows the low finally pulling out. It's a 9.99 low and so it's still pretty deep and still fairly breezy from the north and then tomorrow still kind of breezy from the north so that'll be uh, day five of this system and then it pulls out and then there's the high pressure coming right over us on monday hopefully with enough clear sky that we enjoy our eclipse i think it's going to be fun regardless we're not going to have a sky like this anyway and then on tuesday here comes a backdoor cold front high pressure in southeastern canada and that kind of changes the picture for wednesday as a warm front comes in from the west clouds thicken up and showers tuesday night and wednesday may be mixed with sleet yeah there's some colder air it's going to be tough resistance but the warm air is going to win out here and now we get some more downpours coming in thursday now a system's powering up tapping the gulf of mexico and it's going to drive up the St. Lawrence River Valley, powering, and a strong front's going to come here with thunderstorms possible on Friday. And then Friday night, the cold front goes by, and then a new low forms on the front, and it deepens. Stop it right there, 18Z Saturday. That is 2 o'clock next Saturday afternoon. We're talking about seven days out now, and it shows a 979 low east of Maine and a lot of isobars, and I hate to say it, but if this were to happen to verify, which odds are low, that would be a blizzard in the Green Mountains next Saturday. I'm just calling the play-by-play -play here. You know, I don't run these computer models, but uh, that is uh, game on next weekend for something to happen. You know, whenever it predicts a, a 970-something low, it usually ends up being in the 980s or the 990s. So I think that's an extreme possibility for next weekend. But it looks like it's going to stay interesting. That's going to be coast-to-coast -coast snow week 23 in a row. All right. I get distracted very easily. I've been running myself ragged. I really appreciate Nick supplying us the ragtime type music. I'll try and put a link to your music down below, Nick, uh, so people can find your YouTube site. You're extraordinary at the piano. And Leon Russell is your hero, as far as I can tell. And, and the end more yesterday, uh, we attended this service for our buddy, Greg Urquhart, and the whole family was in town. So. Uh, you know, we were telling stories and you try and stay joyful, but uh, he's gone too young. And then Peter and Chow Ann and I went to the gardens that he maintained for the last years of his life. And that was a real fun experience on Cape Cod. And we're going to do a little tour of Brewster for our and more sights and sounds of nature, walking through the gardens and the herring are in, in Brewster. Very popular location and the flowers are just beginning to bud. We can't stop spring, it's just gonna be a bumpy road into spring and heading back to the north for eclipse coverage. So here's, and more, Cape Cod, nature, sounds and sights, beautiful, a lot of love yesterday. Talk to you tomorrow. Surf, ski, weather, day to day. Down Route 6, over the Bass River, you know where. And so Greg Urquhart was my music man, and he grew up right over here. We used to jump off the railroad bridge, and he lived right about a mile over there. And I think you and him would have been really good friends, really into art and fishing and music. And well, thank you for thinking of me this morning. The buds are swelling, the birds are singing, and Brewster right over the line from Dennis. Beautiful April day.
That's an erratic. Brewster, Massachusetts. It's the yellow forsythia, narcissus, daffodils. Looks like they could still come out a little more, but. Famed Brewster General Store. What happens if the daffodils bloom before Daffodil Day? More than just strawberries here at the strawberry patch. Thousands of daffodils. And along with beautiful blooming trees and April cumulus clouds. Great Cape Tiny Village Arboretum Herbal Apothecary. Anybody want to buy a herbal apothecary? Call Lynn. Price reduced. Call Joseph. Greg's spirit lives in here. He made many of these signs, planted many of the herbs. They're just popping just now. Endless. My first visit. Peter, what street did you grow up on? Hawthorne Street in South Dennis. Well. Did you know that the hawthorn tree is amazing tonic for the heart and cardiovascular system? The tip leaves, flowers, and berries are all used as medicine in treating either high or low blood pressure, palpitations, or heart weakness. A beautiful ornamental tree that can grow 40 feet prefers full sun but can be happy in part shade. Did you know that? I didn't. I knew it was a tree. I had no idea what it even looked like. Then. The birds are amazing in here too. You know? Wow, how many times do you think that Greg operated this rake? <laughs> Seriously. Farmer Greg. <laughs> Fire stirrer. Of, of doom. I like that. Can we just make a fire? Did not come up yet, huh? Good in the, Rosa in the Rugosa in the, in the, in the, coming on. Everything is art. The fragrant hyacinth. Smell it. To the magic forest, through the forest and over the bridge, to the Yoda. A Bodhya Goda. Uh oh. Find here a young Atlantic white cedar forest, which first began when Stephen arrived in 1972. Oh, uh, Stefan, I believe. The area that surrounds it was highly productive blueberry farm as the red swamp maples proliferated. The blueberries were shaded and either died or stopped fruiting after careful forest and fruit, fruit management. The blueberries are once again becoming productive. And I think we're in squishy foot territory. Vernal pool. Where are the tadpoles? Squishy foot. We've only had about three inches of rain in the last week. I don't know if I can make it to the blueberries. I don't know if I'm coming in there. What's that sign say? It says white cedar and blueberry forest. Okay. Blueberry and cedar. What a combination. 
All right. I don't care if my feet get wet. I'm coming in. Blueberries. Here they are. The blueberries beginning to bud underneath the cedar. The Atlantic white cedar. Are you coming in, honey? The Atlantic white cedar. Are you coming in, honey? We better leave a trail of popcorn. Look at the size of that one. Wow. It said when Stefan came here, they were only a foot tall. Oh, boy. That was nice. Drainage. Where's the bridge? Showing him coming through the forest. Now worm chow area in here. Compost. Greg Urquhart was here. I'm sure, no doubt in there. Are we getting in? Yeah. Wow. Greg's gloves, Greg's tools, oh, oh, hello, Greg's bird. Mr. Robin. There's a robin. It's much warmer in here. That's the thing about a greenhouse. We got a robin. Yesterday I had robins up by the mountain. Today I got a robin in a greenhouse. Scenic 62. You were just going to catch it. What's that? What is it? Rosemary. Oh, that's always something you got to put in your soup, right? Come here. Whatever. I, I get put you it on out. the prime rim, yeah. Come here. And it's out. We freed the robin. And we're taking some medicine too. Yoga in the arboretum. And more and more and more. Get the twin trees here to the entrance. From Strawberry Patch, there's a path over to the Immaculate Conception Church. And I think my eye naturalist will tell us what kind of tree this is. And of course, we're in Brewster. You got to go to the Stony Brook Factory Village Grist Mill and Museum, 1663. They count fish. Last seven days, 2,235 since March 16, 2580. When the shad bush blooms, the herring run. Did it bloom today? Do we have herring? What fish are they counting? Is that last year's count? Questions, questions, questions. I don't see any fish, but often when you see the birds, there are herring. So let's go look for birds. Birds are here. So, the fish are here. What did they get here last night? It's herring season. It's quite an uphill battle here. But they'll do it in the name of species survival. This is a shad bush. Doesn't look like it's in bloom to me. Confusing. Anyhow, when this thing blooms, supposedly the fish are here, and the fish are here, so maybe it'll bloom today. Ah, looks like T-Rex was here. Oh wait, T-Rex is not green.
across town in West Dennis, flag at half mast. So many reasons for flags to be at half mast lately. I'll just dedicate this one to you, Gregory Donald Urquhart. Rest in peace.